All right, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to yet another Q&A about the reopening of our schools. As you know by now, on Wednesday, day after tomorrow, we will be open in the hybrid model for all sixth through eighth grade who chose to come back. And um, while this presentation is pretty much focused on that hybrid reopening and for students um, that are coming back, if you are here and your student is uh, remaining remote, uh, there's lots of good information, so feel free to stay. Um, just to let you know, if you haven't been to one of these before, uh, at the bottom of your screen is a Q&A button. Um, and the Q&A is how we can interact. So if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Uh, we have the ability for um, participants to upvote them or make comments on those questions too. I did um, try that one. So I am going to um, start the presentation. So give me one sec, I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, here we go. So tonight, this is very similar to the, um, the sixth grade coming back hybrid presentation we did a few uh, last month. Um, I did obviously incorporate quite a bit more information. Um, I will also share this presentation when we're done. Uh, I'll send out an email with a link to the recording of this, as well as a link to the presentation, because you'll see that there are some links in the presentation, and I believe I've sent most of them home. And one thing I, I really want to tell you is the way we're communicating for the vast majority of our communication is email. So um, I do ask that you guys continue to check your email. Uh, feel free to reach out with questions about any of that commu communication that comes home, I think. Um, we're all overwhelmed, and if you have students at multiple schools, you're getting multiple, multiple um, pieces of communication. I'm trying to be concise, but uh, sometimes I have a hard time uh, shortening the number of words. So hopefully um, the communication has been helpful for everybody. Uh, so what are we, what we're going to go through today is kind of what are, what are we going to do when the students are here? What do they do when they're not here? Talk about some of the campus support and safety measures that we have in place uh, to ensure that while we're back, everybody is safe and doing what they need to do. We'll talk a little bit about uh, what to bring, what to be prepared for, um, and a myriad of other things. So um, I do see a few questions already um, in, the, um, in the chat, and most of these will be answered as we go, and I'll kind of keep track um, and try to answer them um, if, I, if I don't get to it in the presentation. Okay, so uh, we have been co cohorted. So hopefully you all were able to uh, get onto your parent portal and take a look at uh, what cohort your student is in. It's gonna be either A or B. Um, generally speaking, except for this month, uh, A means that you come to school on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. B means you come to school on Thursdays and Fridays. And on Monday, everybody remains remote. Um, that Monday schedule is um, the one through seven where you've got class for about 30 minutes uh, each period with a five minute passing period. Um, as you are very aware by now, uh, March has not really followed um, this very well. Uh, this week is the first week where we sort of have, um, you know, a five day week that's normal. Uh, next week we have uh, two Monday schedules on Monday and Tuesday, and then um, we go into the, the cohorts Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, one thing that um, I made some assumptions this year, and I think I mentioned this in an, in an email communication a couple of weeks ago, we've, we've been starting to refer to days as odd or even days because they don't necessarily match up with the day of the week. And so odd days just mean we're having the odd schedule, right? Periods one, three, five, and seven, the odd numbers. So those are odd block days. Even days are the days we have two, four, and six. Of course, those even days are the days that are late start, and those will continue for the rest of the year. Um, the even block days, which are usually Wednesdays and Fridays, um, are late start, where school starts at 9.50. Um, I did create a little bit of a new bell schedule um, for our internally. It doesn't affect start and end times, um, but I'll, as I show you this next slide, uh, you'll sort of understand what we're doing. Um, I did link the calendar. Um, it is a Google Doc, and I've been updating it as we get changes. Um, if you looked at my last email, I think Friday, uh, the link to it, I color-coded the cohorts uh, to try to make it a little bit um, easier to figure out when your kid is supposed to come to school. To reiterate, uh, tomorrow, 
It's a Tuesday. It's an odd schedule and only the sixth graders will be coming only for their core classes. Wednesday is the first day where cohort A will come for all of their classes, sixth to eighth grade. Um, so we are, we um, agreed to start after the official movement to the tier and it was negotiated that uh, Wednesday the 17th will be the first day of school back. Um, so again, there's a link to the calendar to see all those changes. So um, this is an overwhelming slide. So for those of you that are looking at this, um, this is kind of when the bells are gonna ring. So this isn't, this is me basically taking the bell schedule that all the middle schools have and adding a few things. Uh, we're gonna have about 165 students on campus. Um, that number is a very manageable number. Um, but what we really wanted to make sure we were doing is not have all 165 of them leaving their classroom at the same time. The other thing that terrified me as a, as a middle school principal is these 10 minute passing periods. Um, for a school this size, 10 minutes, um, I really understand it for students who are at home and remote and on their computers, it's a great period of time to kind of stretch and get your eyes off the screen. Uh, but for students on campus, um, that's a long period of time, um, especially because as we'll talk about in a little bit, we'll be building in some mask breaks during the, during the period. So what we have done is created a staggered release schedule. So we're gonna always have the sixth grade class leave five minutes before the seventh and eighth grade classes. And that's um, what's reflected on here. So if you look at Tuesday at 940, we have the sixth grade passing period. So first period goes from 830 to 940. That first five minutes, sixth graders will go to their next class, wait, and then at that five minute bell, the seventh and eighth graders will then go to their class. And so we're not having um, everybody getting up and moving at the exact same time. So we're gonna try this out the first couple of weeks and see how it goes. Um, you're also gonna notice the sixth graders will be released a little bit early to go to lunch. Um, and that again is, is to help with um, sort of the grab and go lunch situation, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, and again, if you want this for your refrigerator, um, I did include a link. And so when I send this out, the link to this is directly there and you can print it if you want. Um, the district bell schedule, um, the one that I've sent out numerous times that's on the district website um, is, the, is really the one that's important, especially on the days you're at home. Um, this bell schedule is really just to help with um, some of the congestion in the hallways. So hybrid means you're gonna be coming to school two days a week. So three days a week, you're at home. So on Mondays, it's a remote day, just like it's been the whole school year or for the last calendar year. Um, you'll log in remotely, you'll follow your Zooms, um, every student at home uh, remotely on Mondays. Those are the 105 end, day, uh, end time, uh, 30 minute periods, that's Monday. So it gets a little bit more complicated and um, some of you unfortunately got to experience this when you asked for some switches in, in your student schedules. Um, the way that we were um, told to create our schedule is for science, math, core, and for the most part, PE. So any classes where we have multiple sections or multiple teachers, we had to create fully remote periods and fully in-person hybrid periods. And so what happens is um, for those classes, teachers have the option of bringing in the kids from home for those fully hybrid classes. So on your asynchronous days, there will actually be most of our teachers bringing those students in at the same time via Zoom. So they'll be teaching the students in front of them and then the students at home where it's their off cohort, they will log in through Zoom and experience what's happening in the class. For the most part, it's gonna be for a direct lesson to go over instructions and then they'll set them free at home to work um, independently. And so this is not mandated and it won't be every time, but we're really telling all of you right now, as well as telling our students is follow your schedule, even if it's a day you're not on campus. So even if your second period is uh, science and it's asynchronous today, your fourth period music might be one that you have to be at. And so because of the way the classes are scheduled um, for those mixed classes, you're gonna attend class every day. Um, every day that it's scheduled. For electives, this is the situation. You're gonna have students in class and students at home who are remote all the time. And so those classes will happen every day that the, the class is scheduled. 
So that video conferencing piece, that's the term we're using for the teacher teaching the kids at home and the kids in front of them at the same time. It's not gonna be every period every day, um, but it will be some periods every day for sure. And so um, reiterate with your students, and I hope this makes some of you feel a little bit better because um, I know for a lot of families, the idea of having completely asynchronous, you're on your own for two straight days um, is a little bit overwhelming. Um, this should help with the routines and it should help with the kids being connected to what's happening in class. Uh, we've updated, all the classrooms are updated. Um, I sent in my email on Friday to go into your parent portal and check the classroom numbers. Um, our, our, again, our campus is open, which is fantastic. Um, so because our, our campus is open, you can come on the weekend and find where your classrooms are. Um, we just made some brand new room signs, with little bit emojis that'll um, help everybody find where they need to go as well. Um, so that's good. Um, the buses have resumed service. So um, we were told, and I had a few forwarded to me that uh, Traffics uh, reached out directly to families with regards to bus service. Um, again, Traffics is an independent entity. I don't, they don't necessarily work with me very closely. Um, if you um, want information about buses, um, they are supposedly, well, they've started now. So the sixth grade core kids have been picked up and there's a question on here. Uh, when does the bus schedule start? It should start day one, which is Wednesday. Um, so go to Traffics, uh, just Google Traffics, T-R-A-F-F-I-X. And they, um, they have a bunch of information on their website regarding bus service. Um, but because bus service is, um, because bus service is started, um, for our new families, um, just remember that the front of the school, that, that first lane, there's three lanes, that first lane um, is for the buses. So don't park in those lanes, park in a parking place or park um, closest to where the parking is. Uh, we will have crossing guards available in the parking lot before school every day and after school every day to help navigate the parking lot. Um, but again, we're gonna have 165 kids on campus as opposed to 540. Um, we anticipate it not being too big of a deal, but just keep, um, keep aware that the buses do pull up right in front. Um, when, they, when students get dropped off, we don't want them to gather up in the front of the school. We'd like them to move towards where their classes are. Um, so that again, we can, we can keep that six foot distance. Um, we started painting some paws out there um, on, the, on the cement um, at, in a six foot grid so that we can help students understand what six feet really is. Um, it started to rain, so we didn't finish, but we'll have those dots there. Um, and then, um, oh yeah, that's, someone just put in that there's talk uh, change from six foot to three foot. Um, I don't know anything about whether or not um, there's gonna be any changes here. Um, so I know that in the agreement that we were presented, um, the desks are at six feet, six foot distance is the thing. I read that same thing. I think Dr. Fauci came on today and talked about maybe not needing the six feet, that three feet would be appropriate. So I'm gonna actually punt that question a little bit because um, that's a decision that's gonna be above me. However, we have Dr. Malloy coming to our staff meeting on Tuesday, a week from tomorrow. Um, and I think maybe by then we'll have some news about that. Um, but what I can tell you is if the three foot requirement is something that's adopted by the county, the state, our school district, um, we will most likely be able to fit enough desks in classrooms um, to, have, to have full classes. So hopefully that answers that question without answering that question. Um, let's see what else we have. So we, I do have a presentation, a kid-friendly presentation like this, um, and that, that all students will see in their first class, uh, cohort A Wednesday and cohort B on Thursday, um, that'll walk through some of the requirements. Um, the three main things that we're going to really kind of focus on with our kids is washing your hands, of course, wearing a mask, of course, physical distancing. Those are the things that are the sort of the tenants here. Um, all of our classrooms have been ready to go since um, really December. We anticipated coming back on the 5th um, and so uh, the 5th of January. So we're physically ready. The hand sanitizer is there. We've got wipes in every classroom. We've got uh, plenty of extra masks, um, things like that. Again, we're asking the students to bring their own. Um, obviously, it's going to be more comfortable, but if they do or if they break, we, we have plenty of extras. Um, so that's, that is definitely something that uh, we've been ready for for a long time. 
Um, I'm a little concerned about the physical distancing piece. I was on campus a couple of weeks ago for the eighth grade supply pickup and uh, there were some people that hadn't seen each other in a long time and they really felt like they needed to hug. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna have to unfortunately not let that happen. Um, but that is, that is something that we're gonna be working on as a staff um, pretty carefully. The physical dis distancing piece I think is really gonna be the hardest. Our sixth grader has been back for a while. The mask um, piece has not been an issue. Um, I go in and talk to the classes all the time. And um, I was pretty surprised how, how positive they were. Like, it's fine, we're totally used to it now. Um, and so I'm hoping that our seventh and eighth grade students will get uh, used to it as quickly as the sixth grade students did. Um, I did put a link here for mask recommendations. Uh, when this, um, this whole thing started over a year ago, uh, we basically, um, the types of masks, it was unclear. CDC is, has um, given lots of recommendations. The bottom line is tight fit over the nose and mouth. So they want a tight fit in here. So in the beginning, bandanas weren't okay, gaiters weren't okay, things like that, but they've lessened those restrictions. So I did, I did put a link there if you have questions about that. I know that for um, some students, um, those gaiters are just more, much more comfortable and easy to, to pull up and down uh, for them. And we're okay with that. I know that a year ago, gators weren't recommended, but now, now they're okay. Um, but again, tight fit over the nose, tight fit, make sure around the, around the mouth. So those are the things that are um, required. And I do see the questions coming in and I will be um, definitely um, answering them as we go, uh, get to those areas. Um, home screening. So here, here's the thing, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the police. I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not gonna pretend that I am. Uh, what I've sent home a couple times now, and I have it here, is the home screening. You, you should be taking a, a home screening every day. How do I feel? Do I have a headache? Do I have a stomach ache? Do I have body aches? Do I feel like I have a fever? Am I congested? You know, these are the types of things you need to be asking yourself every morning before you get in the car or get on your bike or start walking to school. Um, so there's, there's a helpful little self-screening. We're not submitting it. I'm not collecting it. Um, it's not homework. Um, but it is something that we're asking everybody to take pretty seriously every day. And if you do get sick, feel sick, have symptoms that could be COVID related, um, the decision tree is kind of how we guide the return to school. So some of you have already found this out. If you, if you call your students in sick, um, there is definitely a follow up with what are the symptoms, what have you done, um, and all the quarantine restrictions and things like that um, are very important. And so um, one of the things that all of you that have signed the return to school agreement, what you've agreed to is that you have somebody on your contact list, emergency contacts, yourself, uh, family members, neighbors, um, that are available to pick up your student within 30 minutes. Um, so if there are symptoms, the expectation is that they get picked up um, quickly. We have a separate space that's dedicated, um, forget what we ended up calling it, uh, it was the health room. It was no, it's not the COVID room. We didn't call it that. Uh, but we have a separate space for students who um, don't feel well. We also have in every classroom a, kind of a, a, a basic first aid kit so that if you did cut yourself or something like that, you don't necessarily have to come down to the office to deal with that. Um, so teachers do have those in every classroom as well. Um, hand sanitizer, we've got these big, huge gallon hand sanitizer things in every classroom. It's not the most pleasant. I mean, I know it's killing all the germs, um, but it's a little, I don't know, not sticky, but it, it kind of leaves a residue. Um, students are allowed to bring their own, uh, but we're really asking, don't bring any heavily scented things like that. You know, that's the one thing that we do ask. Um, we have lots of soap and many of our classrooms have sinks already in them. So um, if they want to wash their hands with soap and water, of course, um, that's, that's allowed as well. But we are going to be encouraging a lot of hand sanitizer, hand washing. And like it says on the bottom, if I have to remind you, you know, multiple times that you shouldn't be hugging your friends on campus, you should have your mask on, you should stay six feet, um, students will be sent home. So, um, the bathrooms, we've done some work in the bathrooms. We've um, kind of spaced everything out. So we've kind of blocked off sort of the, every other concept. So um, we have obviously multiple bathrooms and we have, 165 kids, not 500. So there's plenty of time and space um, to use the restroom. Um, and so we're limiting the number depending on the size of the bathroom. And it's, it's all posted, it's all ready to go. We've covered every other sink, every other urinal, every other stall. Um, and so uh, teachers know, um, and we've talked about 
you know, in a 70 minute block, which we're not used to at Los Eros, um, in a 70 minute block, things like needing to go to the restroom during class are okay. And so each, each teacher kind of has their own method there. And um, we are also propping the outer doors of the bathrooms. They have like a, a shield inside, like a little wall, so you can't really see in from the outside. But um, so again, one fewer place you need to grab a handle. Um, so we're, we're hoping that's um, gonna be helpful too. Uh, we have the six foot vests we've already talked about. Um, the HVAC system is programmed to go from five to five now, as opposed to whatever it was before, 745 to 255. Um, so maximum airflow. Um, we did get all new door, new door jam things for teachers who want to prop the doors open. Uh, HVAC systems were all fitted with those HEPA filter type things. Um, uh, sanitize, hand sanitizer and wipes I talked about. Um, so each, each night uh, we have the electrostatic machine that they go through and sanitize everything. Um, so uh, there won't be time between classes to do it. Uh, but every classroom has these huge buckets of wipes that um, students can grab and wipe down their, their student safe. Um, they're approved for that. They don't contain bleach or anything like that. So um, they have that ability to. With our staggered release, that's what much of that five minute extra time is going to be, is getting ready um, to leave, wiping down, and then um, being ready to go. No student will be required to wipe down their space. Um, but the teachers and um, staff have all been sort of talked through on what that's going to look like. Uh, lunchtime. Um, there was a question about lunch. So the grab and go lunch is a pre made lunch. It has some sort of entree, some sort of side, usually a piece of fruit or, or carrot. Um, and it has either milk or juice box and it's got, it's got drinks in there. They're the, like the small ones though. Um, we are absolutely recommending that students bring water bottles. Um, that's gonna be on a later slide, um, but they should, they should bring their own. We have a bottle filler that will be available, um, but I'd be, we were told the drinking fountains are gonna be unavailable. So that's one of the, one of the things we're gonna need to do. So let's make sure students bring um, their own water bottles um, that they can refill on campus. Um, as far as what the lunch room will look like, um, none of you on this call have ever probably had lunch here, uh, but we have kind of a line that goes, and it won't go into the kitchen, but it kind of goes in front of the kitchen and around, and that's where they'll grab. So there's no, there's no paying, there's no logging in, there's just if you want a lunch, you can have it. Um, since we're staggered lunch, or staggering the dismissal, uh, we don't anticipate a big backup there, it should be pretty quick. Of course, students can bring their own food. Um, they should bring a snack, they should bring their own lunch, um, if that's something they'd rather have, but lunch is available every day. And frankly, if they bring their own and want to have one from school, that's fine too. Um, but what we are doing is we're setting up every single table we have, um, which is a lot, um, because we're limiting the number of kids per table um, to ensure that kids are spaced out, all facing the same direction. We'll have tables inside and outside when it's not raining. Um, most of our students, um, especially seventh and eighth grade, don't generally eat in the NPR anyway, um, so they can eat around campus. Um, in the past, we've had multiple lunch periods, so it was really tough. You know, if sixth graders were in class while seventh and eighth were out eating, we didn't really want them around campus. Uh, but because we have one lunch this year, um, that helps me with supervision. We'll have more teachers available for supervision, but it also provides more space for kids to spread out um, and eat the lunch. Um, and on rainy days, uh, classrooms are usually available. Like I said, we'll have every table set up in the NPR as well. So um, there should be plenty of space. We're not super concerned about that. Um, before school, again, like I said at the beginning, sort of wait outside of classroom. Um, they should have masks on. They should be physically distanced with their friends. Um, the library is not gonna be available. One of the, the issues that we have is the little machine that we use to sanitize does have a liquid in it. And I didn't really want all our books to get covered in that. So we will be utilizing the library. Um, our teacher librarian, Ms. Carter, um, has been teaching in classes and things like that. A book checkout, um, all those types of things are still gonna happen, but it's not gonna be a space where people can just hang out before and after school this year. Um, you know, As we move forward and kind of get some more plans, um, we actually have some plans to kind of modernize what's going on in the library, but for right now, it's not available. Um, after school, and here's, here's where there's a few changes. Um, so student support 
is required for students while they're on campus. Okay, so on your days you're here and you have a sixth and or a seventh period, uh, you will have to stay through student support. Okay, so they school ends officially at 2.55. Um, just like any day, if you have an appointment or something like that and you need to leave before the end of the school day, you just have to call, call out and come in and sign, sign your students out. Um, we're really, the first week or two, we really wanna get a sense of what 165 kids looks like. Um, and we'll start to increase movement at, at um, student support where they can go to physical classrooms where they need the help. You know, you may be in a class where you don't need any help. And so you're gonna have your device, so you'll still be able to log on and get help from your teacher um, virtually. The students that are at home will still have access to their teacher during student support via Zoom. Um, so all those things are there, but um, school does end at 2.55 um, on every day, except for Monday that you're at home remote anyway. I answered that question. Um, so um, during this time period, a lot of our students um, dropped an elective, so decided to just have six periods. In middle school, you only have to have six periods. We offer you seven, but you don't have to have it. So we have a few students who don't have a sixth or don't have a seventh period, and even a few who don't have a first or a second. So in those situations, we don't have a space on campus for them to stay. So if your student does not have a sixth period and it's the end of an even day, um, they don't, they need to go home after fourth period. And so please work with your transportation in a way that that's gonna be, that's gonna work for you. Uh, we keep track of which kids um, can leave campus each day. We have a list of the kids who don't have those periods, um, but please understand that we're not gonna have a place on campus uh, for them to hang out for that 70 plus minutes. I mean, with student support, it's kind of longer than that. Um, for students who have a class at Monta Vista, you know, we offer, we have geometry, Japanese, French, and Spanish, Spanish, I don't know, maybe not Spanish. Uh, for those students, I believe that the geometry and the Japanese are remote at Monta Vista, so your students will be remoting into those. We would prefer you to do those at home, so hopefully um, that's going to work. There is a larger break between our last class and the Monta Vista class, so there should be plenty of time for that. Um, for those who are physically going to go to Monta Vista, if they're taking French, uh, Ms. Mahoney will take those kids over the first day each, each time they're here uh, to show them which way to go, how to, um, where the classroom is, and those kinds of things. So we are going to do that. Uh, what do we need everybody to bring? Uh, well, it's school, so they need to bring their supplies. Um, we're going to ask every student to have some sort of a backpack. Um, you know, some, some have the, the little rolling ones still, um, most have a backpack. Uh, we want you to bring your Chromebook. Um, by now, I hope you've seen all my, all my emails with regards to if you need a district, um, district Chromebook, please get that order in quick. You can look at my email on Friday for the link. Um, we have anyone who marked on your declaration that you need a device, we have them here, they're ready to go. So on the first day, we'll get those distributed to students who ask for them. Um, we will obviously, there's gonna be issues. We will obviously have a few extras that they can check out for the day to get them through the day. But the idea of bringing the Chromebook to school isn't about getting into classroom and then jumping on a Zoom, okay? You might as well just stay remote if that's what you're gonna do. The idea is that teachers, just from a, from a way of keeping organized, are gonna keep their assignments in Google Classroom and School Loop. Um, and so to, to be able to access those assignments, they're gonna need Okay, so it's not to get on a Zoom. In fact, I don't think we could have all of our teachers and students on Zoom at the same time. I don't think our Wi-Fi would do that. So please, please know we're not asking you to bring a Chromebook so that you can do remote school while you're in the classroom. That's not what we're talking about. It's about um, accessing resources. Um, also, all the other things that you, the teachers would ask you to have, your composition books, your pens, your pencils, your rulers, you know, just depending on what the, the, the class um, requires that you have. So teachers should be telling students what they need to have, but at a bare minimum, a, a planner, everybody needs to bring a planner. If you didn't get one or lost them, we do have extras. Uh, pens and pencils are a must, uh, some sort of paper. Uh, the greatest thing I saw is the first day our sixth graders were back, I walked into full class and they were writing. We're like, oh my gosh, when was the last time you wrote anything without typing it? And they all kind of laughed because it had been months. And so, um, I think just the joy of having a pen or pencil in your hand. Um, so make sure they have those things. Um, I, I mentioned water before, water bottle would be great. We have a bottle fill up over by the multi-purpose room, over by the NPR. 
um, drinks a snack. You know, um, there will be mask breaks during the 70 minute block. So to go out and just have a little snack outside um, to, to power through those 70 minute blocks. Um, and this is, this is kind of a district mandate. We really need to keep the number of people on campus at a minimum. So um, the official rule, if you forgot something, you'll just have to live without it. Um, obviously we have exceptions um, to every rule, but that's the general rule. Uh, I mentioned these things already. Um, charging, that's a big one. Um, please, you make your nightly ritual to plug in the, the and charge the Chromebook overnight. Um, a fully charged Chromebook will make it through the day, no problem, especially since they won't be on it the whole day. Um, but please plug them in. Um, we had a lot of issues with kids coming to school with not charged um, Chromebooks. We have five plugs slash charging station in each classroom. So um, as long as they have a USB charging Chromebook, which most of the, all the district ones are, um, we're okay, we can help you out. But in the, in the meantime, please make that part of your nightly ritual. Um, and the one thing that I did really wanna highlight here, uh, Los Cerros has a no cell phone policy and our kids have been home and they've been connected for a year straight. And frankly, I will speak for my eighth grader, he's addicted. Um, we have a no cell phone policy on campus. So they do not need to have their cell phones out. They don't even need to have them on. They need to make a phone call. They can come up to the office, we'll help them out. Um, but that is definitely something that I'm concerned about coming back because I've already seen it with our sixth graders is they just have to have them out all the time. And so this is gonna be something that I'm emphasizing with my staff. Um, we're back in school now and we chose to come back. And part of that is that we're not gonna have cell phones out. Um, you know, there's, there'll be a warning and then there'll be confiscation and then mom and dad need to come down and pick it up and that never usually ends well. So please reiterate with your students, of course, bring your cell phone to school. It's fine, it's 2021, I know that, um, but it needs to be put away, backpack, silence, or better turned off. Um, all right, uh, food, I mentioned we'll have food on campus, but for families on their non-school days, uh, the school district, um, there's been some USDA, lots of great food. So if you need it, um, I put the link to the child nutrition website here for the district. Um, if you are feeling sick, do not come to school. That's what we're gonna reiterate over and over. Um, it's really tough with all these trees in bloom. I know sometimes the allergies can be feel like sick, um, but you know, you know your bodies. Uh, a big one, and I, I emailed this out a few weeks ago, if you're planning on traveling, um, again, I'm not a police officer, but please follow all the CDC recommendations regarding travel. I have the updated link here. Um, there are some great tips and tricks. What, what do you do when you go certain places? If all else fails and you feel like you might've been exposed or didn't feel like it was a very safe trip, um, we are asking that you quarantine. Um, and again, if that's the case, uh, what's nice about the, this whole last year is we're all pretty good at uh, remoting in. <laughs> And getting onto a Zoom. Um, so we can do it as an independent study, but also we can follow along from home on those days. So again, I'm not going to be um, policing that, uh, but it's super important that you guys take it seriously um, when you travel. We have spring break coming up and uh, you know numbers are really good right now. Let's keep them really good, I guess is the bottom line. Okay, so I do, I'm gonna go through um, some of these questions. We have about 15 questions on here so far. Um, so I'm just going to start at the top. Are we following the schedule we're having right now? Yes. The schedule that we have now is not changing. Um, it's the same schedule. Um, the only difference is you'll see the cohorts added to each date. So which cohort comes on which day? So it is the same schedule. The bell schedule that I created for Los Ceros just adds a few little wrinkles with the release time, but all the periods are the same amount of time. Um, how will we find out what synchronous classes the student need to attend on async days? That's a great question. And this, um, this particular question is gonna be teacher dependent, but what they do is they put it on their Google Classrooms. So it's on their stream on their Google Classrooms. Um, I can tell you, and I'll just speak for the, the two, our two sixth grade core teachers, what they're doing is they're starting each day about 20, 25 minutes with the kids at home and the kids. So they're doing it every day. Um, each teacher will be defining that. And so that's, um, that's a really great question and, I, and there's not a standard answer. And I'll, I'll kind of revert back that teachers aren't required to have students be there, um, but they, I think most of them are going to. 
that's what we, we had a staff meeting today and um, that's what a lot of us talked about is that it's just better because to just let our kids at home you're on your own bye bye um, doesn't help anybody because you end up having to reteach or re re give instructions numerous times so plan on being part of every class um, but your teacher will um, have that in their google classroom as the link there um, uh, for those Classes where teachers are doing video conferencing, if a student is not able to come in person on their hybrid in-person day, can they attend remotely when sick or out of town? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, the attendance is a little bit tricky. Um, they change the way we take attendance now. So um, this question has come up quite a bit. If your student is sick, we don't want your student coming to school. So why would I make it harder for them to access their education? So the short answer is yes. If they can't come to school, you're still gonna call them out like we're on a trip, we're, all, we're, we're sick, we're whatever, but whatever reason is. Um, and then we would love if you would attend uh, virtually uh, for those classes that are video conferencing, because I think that helps everybody. Teacher doesn't have to find makeup plans. You, you can keep up to date. Um, I'm never gonna make it harder for you to do the right thing. So that's a great question, Angie. Thank you for that one. Um, there's a couple of things that I just want to point out because I'm not sure who in our audience is here, but for some of our special programs, um, this is that answer is actually not necessarily true. If you have a student in our counseling and rich program, um, a lot of the reason why we're in this program is for school avoidance. Um, so if they're sick, they make them not log in. But for the general general population, the answer is yes, you can follow along. Uh, what time does the day end and start? I think I answered that. I have the link to the bell schedule in there um, on odd block days, which are normally Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, school starts at 8.30 and school ends at 2.55. On even block days, school starts at 9.50 and ends at 2.55. On Mondays, it's 8.30 to 1.05. Uh, yes, and I answered this. The next question was if the kids are sick, can they go to the online classes? Yes. And uh, how many people can sit at a table? So we have different size tables. Uh, some of them, because they're like, they're like double tables that pop down. So you kind of have, I think it's about five. Um, some of them are three, some of them are five. It just depends on which table. Um, do students change into PE clothes for the PE class? Will they? Um, uh, lockers, sorry. So locker room is not, it's going to be off, off limits. So there is no locker room for PE. Um, students will not change. So one of the things that I beg of you is to ensure that your kids come to school in comfortable shoes and things they can move around in. Um, if you didn't see my email Friday, I kind of mentioned this a little bit, but for PE, um, it's going to be um, going to be a little bit different. And uh, they're only in PE physically one day a week. And so they're gonna utilize things like stretching and walking and sort of some free choice activities. Um, and I'm glad that, I'm not sure who this is, but I'm glad that you asked the PE question because I forgot to talk about PE, sorry about that. Um, PE is a little bit different because at this point, um, even being in the red tier, sharing of equipment is tough. So we've got um, both of our PE teachers are, are gung-ho to um, sanitize the equipment in between each period because we have, again, we have that full machine. Um, but for the short term, you know, like a basketball game where they all use the same, um, they all use the same basketball, that's not going to be allowed. But if you were playing horse where everybody had their own basketball, it's fine. Uh, you know, games like, um, uh, like um, Frisbee golf, for example, everyone has their own Frisbee, so they're not sharing the equipment. So it's gonna be some pretty low impact, no largies. For those of you that uh, know about the largey, no mile runs, things like that. We're not gonna get them overexerted. Uh, what we were seeing with some of our sixth graders at other spots um, is, and again, I'll speak for my kid, which is terrible, but he may maybe not in as great a shape as he was before because um, he doesn't ever leave the house <clears throat> um, to come out and then make the kids run or do something like that. You know, We don't need a bunch of kids passing out and getting sick because, uh-oh, why are they sick? That kind of thing. So it's going to be some low impact while they're on campus, which is um, probably going to start off with mostly walking, um, but then it may um, it may build into some of those other um, other activities. So shoes are going to be the big the big part. Got to really be careful about what shoes they're wearing. Um, 
So student support when you're on campus is mandatory and then the kids will be let out after student support. Yes, absolutely. School gets out after student support, which is which is fine. Yes. Uh, the next question, I'm unclear what the two asynchronous days are going to look like. Maybe I missed that part. I can re-listen to call if needed. No, I mean, I'll go through it quickly. Um, when you are off cohort, so you're in cohort A and cohort B is at school and you're at home, you're going to log on to your Google Classrooms and each teacher is going to have a different thing for you to do. Sometimes it's going to be fully independent. Sometimes it's going to be join the Zoom call. The same Zoom call you've been, you've been going to for the last since August, um, and you're going to join the class there. So it's going to be teacher dependent. Electives are all going to be, you're going to log in every time. Okay, so for electives, they're going to be video conferencing every class. So it's really your big core. So in seventh and eighth grade, your two periods of core, science, math. Those, those four periods um, are going to be dependent on the teacher. Your other classes um, are most likely going to be video conference. Uh, all right. Uh, do we need to quarantine if we travel for spring break? Um, you need to determine that yourself. So I link the um, CDC recommendations for that. And they basically say, if this happened, then yes, you should. If this happened, then no, you, you shouldn't. If you drove with your family somewhere and were staying in a place where you weren't intermingling, had close contact, then I would say no. If you get on an airplane in a, in a resort where you're all pushed together, I would say a cruise ship, but I don't think they're doing that yet. You know, those are the ones that you should be quarantined. So that link is in the presentation. And again, I'll send that out to everybody after this. Um, and you'll, you'll need to make that um, designation. If you do feel like your travel requires you to quarantine, um, then we just call in the office and let us know what's happening so that we can update the attendance and make sure that your student has everything your student needs um, to not miss out on any school. Uh, while that quarantine is going on. Uh, I see snack, but they need lunch, right? Yes, they can bring their own lunch or they can have a lunch from here. So they will have enough lunches for every student every day. Um, mm -hmm. Lunches are kind of hit and miss. <laughs> if you go back to my Friday email, um, I have a link to the menu so you can see some of the um, what's coming up for the rest of the month as far as what they're providing. Um, so that link is in my email from Friday. I have to say we had a we have the taco nada and the chimmy nada, which are like empanadas. The chimmy, like a chimichanga, it's bean and cheese though, super good. Taco nada, not so great. So it kind of depends. Um, you can look at that menu and decide whether you want to bring lunch or not. Uh, if the student is hybrid, the class is offered remote only with login from home allowed. Student hybrid class. Well, there's no classes at Los Cerros that are remote only. So that question is only for, um, I would imagine for um, Monta Vista. So they should, they should be doing that from home. So we don't have any classes here that a hybrid student would be in that is remote only. So if a student is in hybrid, they will attend all six or seven of their classes in person on the two days that they're here. I hope that helps. Um, study hall is not available. Yes, good question, Aaron. Um, so we had these little pods that were available for our sixth grade cohorts, to just give them a little bit more time on campus. Um, but because of the number of students, we don't have enough adults that can uh, supervise. So there won't be um, that, that 8.30 to 9.40 kind of study hall that we had, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Um, how do we access the slideshow? I'm going to send it out to everybody as soon as I'm done. Uh, child feels sick and gets better the next day. Can he or she go back to school without getting COVID tested? It's going to depend on the symptoms. It's going to depend on what they were sick with. Um, so I, I also linked that decision tree um, in this email or in this presentation. I think I sent it home Friday too. Um, so it depends on what the symptoms are. If I went home and had three cheeseburgers and, and barfed those up, that's not requiring a COVID test. But if I have a fever, if I have a sharp headache, that's not explained from you know, playing too many video games, um, then you will definitely have to get a, um, either a COVID test or quarantine for the 10 days. Um, if we travel during spring break, does student then just attend all classes remote? Uh, well, spring break, we have no classes. So I don't understand that question, but if you travel, um, 
I'm not sure I understand that question because we won't have any classes during spring break. So if you're saying when we come back and I need to quarantine, then yeah, they can do those classes remote. But again, you need to call it in um, and let us know that because um, we have to mark it a certain way. If it says they're supposed to be in person, but they're not in person, it, it messes up the attendance. So just make sure if you're keeping your student home after something that you feel like you should quarantine for, um, please contact the office and let us know. Uh, if a student has no seventh period, how would they attend student support? They can remote in from home. So all the teachers will have their, their regular student support Zoom sessions open because all of our remote kids and all our asynchronous kids, the non-cohort days, um, they will be getting help too. What I anticipate and what we talked about as a staff today is to provide kind of a bigger space. So if a student is in a class that they don't need help with or they don't and they just want to go somewhere to work on homework, we'll probably open up the MPR and just spread out the students um, who want to leave the, the individual classroom. And that'll help the students who really do need help and with students who are remote at home who need help. Um, and so that's that's kind of our, our plan over the next week or so. And um, kids bring lunch. I think I answered that one. Uh, you just mentioned that a child who is sick on a synchronous day can log on and do school remotely. Is the classroom set up to do that? This is for teachers that are video conferencing. So yes, if you have a teacher who is video conferencing via Zoom, the kids who are at home sick can log in remotely. Yes. If you have a teacher that's doing completely independent work for the students that are home and does not have a Zoom session open, then they'll just have to do the independent work like the other half of the class that's at home. Um, follow up on that. Are teachers teaching remote and in-person classes at once? Uh, yes. So teachers are teaching remote and in-person. If you're an elective teacher, then you are doing that. If you are a core or a science or a math teacher, then you're teaching the kids in front of you and bringing in the kids from home via Zoom um, for part of the period. I imagine um, in talking, some of our math teachers are planning on just kind of having their Zoom session open the whole time. So as they're teaching a lesson, going over homework, things like that, the kids at home can watch um, and participate that way. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're having um, a student in each class kind of be the monitor of, of Zoom questions and things like that. So as the teacher is teaching the kids in the classroom and the kids at home, uh, we wanna make sure we're not forgetting about the kids at home. So these are all strategies that we've been working on really since November. Uh, can we send peanut products for snack and lunch? I have not gotten my list, but if we have um, peanut allergy students, we usually get those flagged. And so um, individual classes will, will have to deal with that. What I'm encouraging our teachers to do is not even have the kids having their snack inside of class. The snack is outside. But this will be, um, we always have, um, during our lunchtime, we have a peanut-free um, area. Uh, these are tables that um, have to be 100% peanut-free. So during lunchtime, that's already part of our system and we have that set up. Um, as far as for a snack, um, that's a good question and I don't think I have that list yet. So thank you for asking it. I will um, pull up that list. Well, no. uh, what was the subject and from on your email? All my emails start with LCMS. So um, anytime I send anything, I try to do all my text and all my emails start with LCMS dash. And I think it was probably maybe Friday update. Uh, I'm not sure what I did. I can, um, I can look again, but I think it would have come out Friday. I don't have that open right now. Um, I'll have to check on that one. Hey, Allison, if you're still on here, as a, can you look that up for me to see when I sent that? Um, if the student has no sixth period and is leaving after fourth, do they need to check out with the office or just leave? We have a list of students who do not have a sixth or seventh, so they do not have to check out. But we really ask for students who are going over to Monta Vista, we usually have them sign out. Um, and it's, it'll get routine, we'll meet with them, um, we'll meet with them the first day, but it's only, I think it's only the French class that's physically going to Monte Vista. Um, geometry and Japanese um, are all remote. Ah, LCMS reopening update. Thank you, Aaron. That was the name of the email, LCMS reopening update. 
Uh, how are the lunches being funded? Is there funded? Is there a fee? If so, if so, how do we pay? This is the United States Department of Agriculture has been providing all of this food since COVID started. So it is not coming out of our general fund. Um, students are not charged for this food. Um, it is available um, for all of our students. Great question. Uh, what percentage of teachers have now been vaccinated? Um, first shot, I would say almost all, if not all who have wanted it, have had their first shot. Um, and I can tell you from experience, I had my second last week, um, vast majority are getting their second last week and this week. So we're in really good shape um, at Los Cerros for um, all of our staff members who have wanted to get vaccinated. Uh, we've been uh, really good at sharing, hey, CVS has some slots, you know, out to everybody kind of a thing. So we're, we're in really good shape with regards to vaccination. I'm very happy about that. Uh, what do you say when you call in? What do you say when you call in? So um, it depends if you're talking about if, if I'm quarantining or I'm sick or I'm going on a trip, I'm not, I don't really understand the question. Um, but the, the general, general thought is um, if you're calling in an absence for your student, you call in the, the regular number, it's right on the front of our website, just call in that number, say why the kid is not there. Um, if it is for illness, you will get a follow-up call um, from either uh, Ms. Kathy or from Anju, our school nurse, um, just to double check, make sure that you're crystal clear on what illness means and uh, the next steps. Um, and students are absolutely allowed to ride their bikes to school. They're allowed to walk to school, buses, um, probably not Uber, but I guess you could if you wanted to. Um, the bottom line is our, um, for new families, we have a huge bike rack up front, um, so they absolutely can ride their bikes to school. We have a crossing guard down on Blemmer starting Wednesday morning. We have obviously a crossing guard up here north where the um, buses drop everybody off. Um, we take that very seriously. I would highly encourage your students to ride their bikes if you live close enough. Um, it's one more little exercise, so we would love that. Okay. Well, there are no more questions in the chat. Um, are there any more questions? My next steps um, are to welcome your students with open arms. Um, your next steps, um, also in that email that I sent this morning, um, I, there is a link and a reminder to sign up for the Panther Prowl. This weekend, our boosters group is hosting a scavenger hunt around Danville. It looks super fun. We did a practice one a couple weekends ago to make sure it worked. Um, we're using the Goose Chase app. It's super cool. It's $100 a family, and all of that money goes to reduce class sizes and to uh, provide more electives. They buy sections. And um, the more sections we have, the more choice our kids have, the smaller classes we have. Um, so if you're thinking about what's a great family adventure this weekend, highly recommend it. Um, I'm here every day. Shoot me an email if you have a question. Other than that, I'm going to stop recording.